everyone. Welcome to episode number 651 of this here electronic engineering podcast called Amelia's Weekly Fish Fry, brought to you by eejournal.com and written, produced, and hosted by me, Amelia Dalton. My guests this week are Solera CEO Pat Brockett and Solera COO Alberto Vivani. Pat, Alberto, and I discuss the trends driving the need for custom analog solutions today and how Solera is looking to revolutionize analog chip design through AI driven automation. Also this week, I check out a new AI powered smart bandage called A Heal. But first, let's bring in Pat and Alberto from Solera. Hi, Pat. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, Amelia. It's good to see you again. Good to see you too. And hi, Alberto. Thank you for joining me. Thanks for having us here, Amelia. Hi. Absolutely. Okay, so last time we spoke, you described a go-to market strategy for Solera, and that was a combination of design services and EDA-like capability to enable customers to use your technology to design their own analog chips. I love that. But recently, you guys announced a change in the company's direction. So tell me more about that. Yes, we're now... Solera Semiconductor. We're a semiconductor company, and what we've pivoted to do is to take our platform technology and use it to design custom silicon for a very wide range of applications and customers. As we went to market with the old strategy, we figured out there's this huge unmet demand for application customer-specific analog circuits that is not being serviced by the, you know, the existing suppliers. And frankly, we ended up with more customers than we knew what to do with. We're old chip guys. So, so we pivoted to what we know, which is supplying chips. All right. So that is quite a dramatic change. So let's talk about what drove this change in strategy. Really market response. We were engaging with both OEMs and chip companies, and the chip companies were interested, but frankly, they were being slower off the mark than the OEMs. So we thought that the OEM bandwagon's moving very rapidly. We'll jump on that, which is what we've done. That's really exciting. Now, technologies like AI are changing the status quo every day, it seems. And Solera is also changing the status quo for analog chip delivery. So speaking of AI, you mentioned last time that AI was part of your strategy. So how is the platform maturing and what kind of results are you seeing? AI is at the center of what we do and of our roadmap. Digital twins are a crucial concept in AI, and what we are using in our technology is called Nestos, are actual digital twins of analog functions. They combine all the different sides of the analog behavior from the physical side to the layout and geometrical side to the actual behavior very closely together, and that's what's allowing us to go to market so quickly with respect to competitors. At the same time, this technology is what allows us to generate enormous amount of synthetic data. And synthetic data are crucial for machine learning training and to successfully get to an AI-driven design for analog. AI-driven design will happen. It's not a question of if. It's only a question of when and who is going to do it. And we believe that we have the best technology and we have five-year head start and we will be the company that will dominate this field. I love it. You know, to your point about results so far, we've done a number of customer chips already, which are in the wafer fab now. And, you know, our estimate is that we are cutting the design and development time down by a factor of 10. As we keep moving forward, our projections with using all of the programs that we have in place for AI 
by the end of this decade, you're going to be able to enter a spec, push a button and get a design. That's where we are. So it's a factor of 10 now. It'll go to instantaneous design by the end of the decade. Wow, that is incredible. Okay, so it seems like you guys have made great progress since our last talk, and this new direction seems really unique and interesting. So what do you think the impact of this will be on the market, and do you see any others following this path? Well, there's a lot of people out there claiming to be doing AI analog design. A lot of it is just doing bits and pieces of IP. It's very difficult for us to estimate what the competition is like. Our input from our customers, but also some of the major semiconductor suppliers is that we are way ahead of everybody else out there that's claiming to have a capability. So we're pretty confident we have a lead. Now it's a matter of really piling on, you know, the development of the platform to do all the things that AI is going to afford us. And that's where this $20 million Series A is going to be a huge help because, you know, we're now already hiring groups of engineers to enable us to complete the plan. That $20 million from Maverick is very important. And there is another kind of competition beside the companies working on AI-driven analog design. And those are the legacy semiconductor companies that we are disrupting. And these companies are very slow to react. And so they will not be able to compete with us in the speed of going to market. And that's the reason why so many customers want to work with us. And that's the reason why we are going to grow much faster than what was possible before for analog companies. The big differentiation between us and the legacy guys the technology affords us is that analog design is still pretty much pushing transistors around. It's very manual, it's slow, it's expensive, and it's very error. What's the word I'm looking for? Prone. Error prone. prone. Thank you. And chip companies don't really like doing custom devices unless there's a huge volume. You know, Apple does its own products, can also get anything it wants. Samsung can probably do the same. There's a lot of other very large customers, very large demand that just can't get custom silicon. So, you know, it's probably an exaggeration to say we're offering custom analog to all, but we're offering custom analog to a lot of people that really want it. Excellent. I love that. Okay, you guys, it's time for your off the cuff. Okay. You get the new off the cuff for the returning guests. So, Alberto, Pat, if you could have a meal with one person, alive or dead, tomorrow, who would it be? Oh, I would love to have a meal with Martin Luther King. You know, what that man did for this country and for the world I actually, the other person I would have liked to have had a meal with was Muhammad Ali. I actually met him in London just by accident and was able to talk to him for a couple of minutes. Unfortunately, he was pretty heavily into his illness. But mm. the other person that I would love to have had a meal with is Martin Luther. Oh, that's fantastic. What about you? As an Italian, I will go back to the Italian Renaissance and... Uh... That was a period of innovation and of multidisciplinarity, which resonates a lot with me and what we're doing at Celera. So I'll pick Leonardo da Vinci. Oh, what a good answer, both of you. Oh, no, I, I would go for Leonardo da Vinci too, but <laughs> you only gave us one. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine the things he thought of and never wrote down. Oh, right. oh yeah. my God. Amazing. Awesome. Thank you so much, both of you. I really appreciate your time today. Okay. Thanks, Amelia. It's good seeing you again. Thank you. From analog for the masses to a solution that every single person has used many times in their lives. Bandages. And how AI is changing the Band-Aid game. Have you heard about a heel? It's a revolutionary new wearable device that aims to optimize each stage of the wound healing process. 
All right, so get this. A team of researchers from UC Santa Cruz and UC Davis, sponsored by the DARPA Better program, has designed a device that combines a camera, bioelectronics, and AI for faster wound healing. And this kind of one-chip closed-loop system is a first of its kind in this arena. So, this new system uses a tiny onboard camera that has been programmed to take photos of the wound every two hours. Those photos are then fed to a machine learning model developed by Associate Professor of Applied Mathematics, Marcella Gomez, which the researchers call the AI Physician that runs on a nearby computer. All right, let's talk about that AI Physician. The AI model used for this system utilizes a reinforcement learning approach to mimic the diagnostic approach used by physicians. The model was given the goal of minimizing time to wound closure and was rewarded for making progress toward that goal. Now, the algorithm at the heart of this reinforcement learning model was called Deep Mapper which sounds a bit like a geeky superhero, right? <laughs> so Deep Mapper processes the images of the wounds to quantify the stage of healing in comparison to normal progression and then maps it along the trajectory of healing. As time passes with the device on the wound, it learns a linear dynamic model of the past healing and uses that to forecast how the healing will continue. So if an image reveals a lag, the machine learning model applies a treatment, either with medicine, which is delivered via bioelectronics, or with an electric field, which can enhance cell migration toward wound closure. The treatment aspect of this study is also really cool. The medicinal part is actually a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor, which controls the serotonin levels in the wound and improves healing by decreasing inflammation and increasing wound tissue closure. The electric field treatment aspect is based on prior work of UC Davis Min Zhao and Rosalind Rivka Azarov that showed that an electric field could be optimized to improve the healing of wounds. Very importantly, this technique makes it possible for the algorithm to learn in real time the impact of the drug or electric field on healing and can guide the reinforcement learning model's iterative decision-making on exactly how to adjust the drug concentration or electric field strength. So this team contends that this portable wireless device could make wound therapy more accessible to patients in remote areas or with limited mobility and is exploring the potential for this device to be used to improve the healing of chronic or infected wounds. Super cool, right? So if you want even more information about Solera or this a Heal, I've included several links below the player on this week's fish frying page on eejournal.com. Hey, have you checked out EE Journal on social media yet? Well, you should. You can find us at facebook.com slash eejournal. If LinkedIn is more your thing, I dig it. You can follow us or me on LinkedIn. And we are also on Blue Sky Social and Mastodon too. And we have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash eejournal. Folks, it is chock full of all kinds of techie videos, including our very popular Chalk Talk webcast series, hosted by me, <laughs> and our animated series called Libby's Lab. And of course, you can subscribe to our EE Journal YouTube channel as well. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. If you know of any cool new technology or heck you just want to chat, 
shoot me a line at Amelia, that's A-M-E-L-I-A, at eejournal.com. Or post a comment on our forums on EE Journal. For the week of September 26th, 2025, I'm Amelia Dalton, and you've been fried. <laughs>